What is going on within the Telos ecosystem? Is this a project that we should continue to add to our bags during this correction, crypto winter, bear market, whatever you wanna call it. I'm gonna get into what's going on, what I see happening, where we're going. This is not financial advice. Do your own research. This is for educational entertainment purposes only. All right, so let's get into this. There's some interesting things happening with Telos. However, I still believe this is a very high risk project. We're in a lower market cap. Uh, space with Telos compared to its competitors like Ethereum and Avalanche and Solana that are in the billions, tens of billions of market caps. They are going to take bigger hits. People, when there's more fear out there, are going to be looking to sell and hold the more solid projects like Bitcoin or Ethereum and things like that. Uh, Telos right here, we're looking at, it's at 51 million dollar market cap. It's very low. It's all-time high was $1.44. We're at just above 25 cents at 26 cents. Look here at our graph. Uh, we have come way back down. We have a level of support here at the uh, at the uh, 10 cent range. Um, yeah, 10, 20 cents. So we're we're getting down there. I could, you know, I, I'd say it's uh, very possible we could hit the 10 cent range again before this crypto winter is done. Uh, so having said that, um, you know. Who knows, but I wanna go over what's going on with Telos, some new updates, uh, and get into the ecosystem. So, so let's look at DeFi Llama here. Telos, ranking number 47 in total value locked at 44 million. The ratio of market cap to value locked is 1.5. So that's a, that's a good number for our TVL. We want that number to be lower. Um, here it shows the value has been uh, unlocking over this period. Our max up here was uh, 232 million in total value locked. Um, however, we are the entire crypto market, uh, if we look at the overview of the whole market, see the entire market has um, really come down and the total value that's been locked on in DeFi has really decreased from the over $250 billion range. Now we're at 106 billion total locked uh, in DeFi. If you look here at, uh, see Ethereum here is our, is our top dog. And yes, it's also come down a lot as well. It's down to 68 billion and locked. It was up at its peak at, $150 billion range. So let's get into some of the new news with Telos. What I do like about Telos is they are constantly updating their, they constantly have new things happening with the ecosystem. So whether it's big or small, I think some of these are on the smaller end and uh, will it actually bring real value to the token That's will be for, that will be seen. But if we look at their news page here, I mean, almost every couple of days, they're bringing out new sources of news, which I do like to see. That's great for the ecosystem or that's great for the community to see what's going on. There are a couple of things that I noticed that uh, is cool to see. One was here on April 22nd. They announced that they are carbon neutral. So... I did a little bit deeper dive research into this and it says here that they are partnering with Planet Zero, which is part of Redshaw Advisors LLT, LTD, a leading carbon risk management firm. Uh, they're using, uh, what is it, biochar? Where is it? Yeah, they use biochar to take carbon out of the atmosphere. And from the research I've done, that's basically using plants and using uh, agriculture to take carbon out of the atmosphere, which is good. However, I did go to Planet Zero's website. It's a little vague on how they're doing this, but I'm hoping what they're saying here is true. You know, if we take it at face value, it's awesome that Telos blockchain is carbon neutral, especially when we have the New York Senate here passing a bill that wants to ban crypto mining uh, in New York because of its impact on the carbon footprint. And this is a huge thing. Uh, this is actually a big issue I have with Bitcoin uh, and Ethereum right now is how much of a environmental impact these blockchains have uh, and their carbon footprint, the amount of energy that these blockchains use just to uh, create a ledger for financial transactions, for transactions digitally. It's a lot of energy. I believe the Bitcoin is using more energy than, than certain countries right now. Uh, so I think with projects that are 
um, environmentally minded, environmentally friendly. I see in the long term projects like that, that is that's bullish for me. And I do like to see that and I do care about the environment and I am conscious of this. So I want to be investing in projects that I don't believe are bad for the environment, uh, that are um, pointlessly using up carbon emissions. And that's why I try not to uh, use the Bitcoin blockchain very much. I have some Bitcoin that I bought a while ago, but I try not to trade Bitcoin uh, and try not to use uh, that uh, blockchain because it uses an immense, immense, immense amount of energy and carbon to validate and to uh, form those blocks. So, and I, and I do see, I think with the way we're moving with, with climate change and just the general view of people towards the environment, that I could see there'd be a big backlash against these blockchains. They're extremely bad for the environment. It just has a really bad image. It is bad intrinsically, and it has a bad brand of basically destroying the environment to make money, uh, which is not where I think we want to be in the crypto space. So I'm not going to get into every single one of these updates, but here we have Telos uh, partnering with ApeSwap. That's a uh, exchange on the BNB chain and uh you know this is just another place for people to get exposure to tell us to trade tell us to buy tell us so that adds uh decreases a path of resistance for customers to get the telos um token and if you want to learn more about the actual tokenomics of telos and the reasons why it seems to be have some really good technology i did another video on telos i'll link it in the description you can check that out i go into a little deeper into other aspects of the technology of telos and this i'm really going over more of the updates and what's going on uh currently there's this other project here that recently partnered with telos called seeds and this is a little bit of a concern for me. Uh, this is actually an algorithmic stablecoin. And after what happened with uh, Terra, I believe that every blockchain needs to be extremely careful of algorithmic stablecoins. Uh, this was an absolute disaster for the cryptocurrency space. What happened to Terra? I actually did another video on that as well. If you want to check that out, I can link in the description. But algorithmic stablecoin seems like we haven't figured that out yet. And if that's somehow attached to your blockchain, attached to your brand, and these things go down where people are trusting that the stablecoin is going to stay at a dollar, uh, that is a bit of a concern for me. And I think blockchains need to be very, very careful of allowing algorithmic stablecoins attached to their blockchains or with their uh, attached to their token in any way or have anything to do with their, their project. Um, this project here, Teleland NFTs. Now this I don't see as being a huge needle mover for the Telos token. However, I did some research into this project and, and, and the mission behind it seems very cool. Basically there is um, a guy down in Peru right now and a farmer and they are looking to purchase a plot of land to grow food and grow agriculture for the local community. And as part of the TELUS community, we can buy and mint their NFTs. I believe it's about $150 right now. Uh, and you will basically have a small ownership of this plot of land and you will receive some passive income yearly. Uh, but more, more importantly, I kind of see this more as like a, uh, a charitable um, type of project where I don't know if there's going to be huge returns in this space but it is cool just to see the potential of what nfts can do and it's cool that this project is coming to telos um the problem with these kinds of projects is i think a lot of it is based on trust we have to trust that these people are actually going to do what they say they're going to do and they're not just going to take your money and say okay sorry goodbye um, so, you know, there is always that, I don't know if I'm going to participate in this project, but this is just one of the NFT projects that has come to the Telos ecosystem. And it does seem cool. It, it seems like it has a really cool mission and it seems like Telos is building this brand of, being, uh, you know, environmentally aware, trying to give back, trying to help, uh, which is great for the branding and would be great for the world if it's actually what is going on as well. So this project recently was backed by Telos as well called Moon, and this is a metaverse project. Uh, it's a video game, play to earn video game, looks 
very cool based on the trailer. I can link the trailer in the description. I mean, it looks awesome. Doesn't seem like it's out yet. Doesn't seem like it's playable yet. Uh, we'll see how it actually comes about when it really happens. Uh, there's gonna be land NFTs, play to earn. I'm sure they're gonna have their own token. So what's nice is they, if you look at these uh, reasons why teams are partnering with Telos, uh, it usually is because they say highest performing blockchain of the world, extremely fast, it's extremely inexpensive, they have great transactions per second. Uh, and one thing that's very cool about Telos is that, and I think this is a pro and a con for Telos, that there was no ICO. It is a completely grassroots project. It did not take on VC backing. Uh, to have a real true decentralized uh, ecosystem and community. And Telos seems to be a really slow kind of growing project, which um, can maybe hurt it in the short term, but if it continues to grow, continues to stick around, if it can continue to deliver, then we could see really huge upside in the future. Uh, it seems like they're doing a lot of things correct. It's just you know, taking them time. They don't have the marketing. They don't have the capital. They don't have a lot of the big investment that the other competitors like Solana or Avalanche or Cardano um, have or Ethereum. They don't have the brand recognition yet. So that is a can be a pro and a con as well. So you got to be careful because the the perception of these coins is really what's so important with the value. Unfortunately, right now, perception is so, so, so important and the knowing about these projects. So, so with projects that are less known like this could be much more volatile, much higher risk. Uh, so be careful with how much you put into this project, careful with your portfolio. I know some people are just all in. Uh, it does seem like it has some good intrinsic uh, properties and good technology. So here recently they partnered with Nuco.cloud. It's actually a German funded project that's being built on the Telos blockchain. Uh, it's very cool that the government of Germany is basically approving Telos and liking the technology of Telos and wanting to build on it. It's a DeFi project that is uh, using computing power from phones, computers, and servers to monetize uh, cloud space for users. Uh, sounds, you know, sounds good. It sounds, uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. These things are all very early stage, but there's a lot seeming to be happening in Telos. There is growth. There are projects coming to the ecosystem. They do continue to just build, continue to bring uh, more things to their ecosystem. And that is good, but the price is down. So, you know, now could be a good time or just over this uh, crypto winter, or, you know, besides necessarily needing to put a lot more money into Telos, you can stake the Telos you already have. Telos is staking at 13% APR right now, which is pretty awesome. I have my Telos staked. Uh, so, you know, just get some compounding. I'm just going to hodl and uh, hope that Telos uh, continues to survive, continues to grow. And let's get into the roadmap here. Uh, Telos has a very clear roadmap, which is nice to see. And they have been checking off these uh, projects here, these developments that they're doing, the Telos EVM, partnerships and exchanges, Telos scan. I would like to see a better blockchain explorer. I want to see something that shows the wallet growth. I want to see the transactions per day and the growth of transactions per day. I would like to see its uh, gas fees and usage. Uh, so that I'm, if anyone knows where to find that, please uh, leave it in the comments. I'm looking for that. I haven't been able to find it. They did a, they have their D store here that they accomplished, which is a, um, a data storage project. So they have a lot of. Uh, here we go. So this is where we are, Telus Core release upgrade. The EVM 2.0 development, that is going to be coming soon. So this is just an upgrade to their Ethereum virtual machine, single asset staking, Liquid Liquirex, Open Block Explorer, Telus native to EVM bridge, critical infrastructure, core code consortium, Telescan iteration, Telus Academy, Telus arbitration, Telus core development, wallets and usability, Satoshi tokens. So they have a lot on their roadmap. Uh, it seems like it's going to take a while to get to all this. And uh, we'll just kind of see how this plays out, but they are growing, they are executing, they are 
you know, building and building. And it seems like they have a nice brand that they've created about being grassroots and growing slow and building something that works. Still, uh, I do see this as, I mean, everything in the cryptocurrency is high, is, currency space is high risk. Um, but, you know, uh, I just read, an, let's see if I can find this article that Andreessen Horowitz put out. It was, uh, so here, this was interesting to see. This isn't directly correlated to Telos, but for any of you guys who are afraid in the crypto space at all, uh, this is more about the entire space of cryptocurrency. Mark Andreessen, one of the founders of Andreessen Horowitz, A16Z, one of the top VC firms in the world, uh, compared Web3 and cryptocurrencies, the blockchain technology to the internet in the late 1990s. And he states in here that this is the only time I've ever said this is like the internet. If you go back through all my historical date statements uh, that he had never compared any of his investments or any projects or any tech really to the internet. Uh, this guy is extremely intelligent. His investment acumen and his foresight in technology has been amazing. So this is great to see. If you want to see a bigger holistic view of the cryptocurrency space by A16Z, I did do a video on that. I can link it in the description. It's really awesome to see for the cryptocurrency currency space as a whole and the future and the overall growth and the trajectory from a macro standpoint of where we're where we've been where we're going i thought it was awesome to see that it's very comforting when we're in a time right now that there can be a lot of fear and uncertainty about cryptocurrency however there are 19,000 cryptocurrencies out there and most of those probably 90 percent 99 percent of them are not going to last so be very careful with your especially your micro caps and just how you're diversified i would recommend being diversified don't be all in on one thing we see what happened to terra and this fool and not, you're not fooled, but this, some of the top people in the cryptocurrency space got burned so badly by Terra and UST. And so no matter how rock solid a project may seem, we still need to be careful. We should still take profits. Uh, we should still uh, diversify and not put all our eggs in one basket. Hope you guys learned something. Keep aping, keep hodling, let's go. Woo!